All right, welcome everybody to another MTR Fab video. Today we are going to do a repair job. And I thought this one would actually be pretty good for the channel. And this was brought in by a friend of mine. And it's his little Arian's uh, lawnmower. It looks like this main frame tubing on the left side of this is fractured all the way through, all the way around on four sides. And it's actually separating. Uh, right under it is the hydrostatic uh, left drive unit. He wants me to try to build something to quiet it down. Um, so I've got some ideas and we'll get to that after we do this repair. But the first thing before I even try to repair this, I can see that there's stuff inside the tube. So I'm going to do a nice repair here. So the other thing, I'm going to immediately look at the other side. He said it wasn't damaged, but I'm going to take a peek for myself. And it looks good on the top side. But this side does look fine. He spoke to me originally. I think he said that this was something that kind of commonly occurs with this particular model. Uh, so we're going to go to the ends to figure out how to uh, repair this and, and make it so it doesn't actually crack again and or just crack in a different spot. Because there's a good possibility for that. If you were to just weld this back up, it's going to happen again. So we're going to reinforce that joint area. Uh, without creating an obstruction for the cover and um, from there you know I just need to get a better look at it and we'll assess it when I take maybe this fuel tank out of my way take the wheel off and uh, push this wiring back so let's get started I just wanted you guys to see it as it comes in and as it looks um, so this is the job and this is something that if you have a welder at home, you know, he could do this himself. He's a crafty guy. Uh, and you could probably just bolt a piece of steel over that with some U-bolts ultimately and, and make it do um, what it needs to do. But, you know, we're going to get it repaired right. Uh, that's what we do. All right, get this bad Larry jacked up. It was actually pretty difficult just because there's not really many places to support the frame rail on this left side where I want to. But... That's how the crack looks now that I can see the wheel side of it And obviously there's some you know oily scuzz that we got to clean up We got some lawn goodies. We got to get out of there So the first course of action is really kind of cleaning and inspecting and then figuring out how to get access to this area Let's See if I can get you some light too All right. Let's see the last some hardware here all right, fellas, there's the area all cleaned up. This is the progress as of now, um, down to the dirty here. I got it cleaned up and lined up, and you can see what I'm shooting for here. Uh, so that's the ground clamp for the welder. Ignore that for now. But what I'm showing you is the repair groove I've put inside here. And this is a place for my MIG bead to sit in. And whether you're sticking, Megan beading, whatever, you know, form of welding you're doing in your DIY adventures, if you do this, your weld will, you know, be much easier for you to be successful. And the reason is, um, I tapered the material down in the groove, which is a nice spot for a weld to adhere to, and then we can just fill it right up, which will allow us to spend some time and get some good heat into the joint. Now, I want you guys to see the back side of this, but it's really hard with the light the way it is. There it is. And, you know, of course it's off to the edge of the frame, but that's what I can do. And you can see the groove that I've cut in the back side of this. So this wasn't really easy, obviously. And to do it, I used a bunch of different tools. And we're going to go up underneath this because we can't weld the bottom of this tube, we're going to uh, weld this bracket to the tube in the front edge here, which it never was. And it broke right where that bracket stops. So we're going to reinforce that area after we're done doing this core repair. We got at this point um, a little bit of spatter, which means I got my wires feed just a little bit high. And 
it's good because I kind of want to push the thing in when I go upside down. So I've welded the top and the side after I got, you know, some alignment tacks and used my clamp to wrestle it around. You know, it's not an interesting video, so I didn't uh, leave it in there. But I've got the two sides that you can see. And I know uh, normally I like to do the hard thing first, but I'm trying to make the hard thing as easy as possible by uh, preheating the other two sides of this tubing so I can get as good of a weld as I'm going to get in this situation. There it is. Bubble gummed in there. I got the smoking gun right there. And I've still got a welder running. I'll take another peek here. See how we did. Um, I'm kind of just laying down in the dirt here. And again, I'm just trying to get this top tube tied into this bottom bracket because that's where it cracked. And unless I cut this tube open, I wasn't going to get a nice good weld on the bottom of the tube. So we're going to, you know, make sure we do a decent job down here of this because it's not going to be much stronger than it originally was. And it obviously was weak. So we're going to figure out some ways to improve it. In the meantime, uh, I think I'm happy with the actual weld. It's good enough. So we got that all tied in and all the way around. Got the back side of it. Once again, super hard for you guys to see probably. But it was super difficult to get the right angle. Even though I have a nice small MIG gun, um, it was difficult to get in there. Pretty happy with how that came out though. Um, nice build up. And I'm going to leave it just as such. And then I tried to pile it together at the bottom. I know it looks black. And uh, that's because it's pretty dirty down there. Burning some oil. But, you know, we cleaned the area pretty good. And uh, we put a good effort into that. And now we're going to flatten this top section out and that's why we didn't want to build up the weld too high because we're going to put our replacement piece in place here we are now we are done for today and i'll show you guys what i got what i got no a whole lot no um what we got is our pieces in yay and you see I welded it the full length on this side. I didn't bother to do that on the other side. I, I did weld the ends and then I welded, uh, or weld, put weld over <laughs> the crack area back here. And the reason why I didn't want to fire all kinds of weld all the way down through there is I've got, you know, these electronics. So I kind of slowly worked my way into this. And now i got this. And... I'm happy with that. That's a good repair. We could probably stop there. Um, but I would like to do something to tie this lower bracket into here. And even if it's just a, a scrap triangle or something. Um, we need to do something there because uh, what was there is just not good enough. And then we might put a, a strap over this joint to try to keep this section from opening up ever again. Okay, I'm going to put a little gusset in here. To get this, this, you know, this shear line where it broke in the first place, um, moved out, and try to transfer it up into that corner that we passed that guy up in. So this is a piece of scrap up off my bench. I'm gonna weld it with a nice open gap like that because I'm not gonna be able to weld it from both sides. Um, so I'm gonna just do a nice job of welding it in from out here with a small gap like that which will ensure it's fused in nicely to both pieces. Uh, I'm going to kind of try to keep it flush with this bottom tube out to the edge here and uh, I'm going to hit that and we're going to move on. Okay we're going to call that good enough. Um, you can see I put a little coupon over the fracture section and I didn't even line it up really with any of the original fracture. I just put it in the same area. And that's to make the stresses, you know, walk around the crack hopefully so it doesn't redevelop. We got a nice little triangle in there. Um, this is much stronger than it ever was. 
now I can say that and we can move on so I'm gonna just paint this section up and uh, get it black for him pro tip for you uh, if you wanna speed up the old rattle can out in the cold get a heat gun heat your can up a little bit before you paint heat your surface up a little bit and get it we're just trying to get this thing in black as quick as possible you don't have to be too picky about this I want to get a cover for him so the repair is not going to be the source of rust. Make a slip pad later. Here it is in some black paint. I'm going to just let this cure up before I peel any of the tape. It It's one of those things where, you know, I mean, just because you can get paint all over everything doesn't mean you really should. So. I tried to cover up the stuff. I mean, I know it's this uh, lawnmower, and but that's some of the advantages of leaving stuff dirty, right? Um, you can get overspray on it, and then it'll just wash off. But this area was pretty clean because I had wiped it clean, so I could weld it clean, right? Right? See a see a theme? See in there? I left a little clearance in between so it can vibrate, wiggle, and jiggle. The rubber stop is still where it needs to be. This is what we ended up with, guys. I, I'm sorry I couldn't show you the fitment process because it's like uh, requires a bunch of hands and I'm really trying to just knock this out. Um, one of the things that irritates me about exhaust pipes and comment if you uh, agree that this is kind of shitty that they do this, that they put these nice labels that peel off in a thousand pieces if you want to uh, weld around it. It kind of creates for a mess and usually catches on fire and you know, so I've I've got these uh, what I'm calling slip joints and these were the long radius elbows that we had we turned them into close radius elbows and I also used two factory holes in the frame on this side and created this bracket that uses a universal uh, exhaust bracket and that's gonna hold the far end of the muffler and it's gonna sit under this so it's not uh, in uh, you know people's prying hands all right so it'll be kind of a heat shield will be this frame member and that pipe will sneak right up around here and go under and we're going to weld it to this cap so i'm going to start tacking this together and i'll check back with you guys in a little bit so there it is in all its prettiness see i got it as tucked up there as i can really i think it'll be okay for loading and offloading it should still be below this when the angle of the tire hits so I don't think I messed with anything I kept it as tight in here as I could obviously uh, kept that as tight as I could it's all tacked together firm enough now that you know I'm pretty sure it's not gonna move when I take it off and there's the assembly in all its glory obviously I got some pretty good gaps to weld up my suggestion to you uh, from my experience of doing this stuff is take your time especially with sheet metal uh, creep up on it. I'll, you know, weld these big gaps first while it's nice and cold and uh, Maybe not get them all and then move on to the next spot uh, and work my way around until this thing's fully welded up But you can see how the flanges ended up relatively parallel and This this should do the job. So I'm not gonna get too much crazier than that so this concludes the repair job to make this quieter there's all the clearances clearance clearance and that's how I did it there was some bubble gum going on up in here yep for sure <laughs> and uh, luminized pipe is not my favorite thing and hopefully it uh, gets us the result we want but it fitment wise it works good there's the frame repair from up top what it looks like all right guys this concludes this video if you like what you saw like what you see check the channel out for other videos with kind of similar content uh, I do some tool reviews I do some DIY stuff I do some repair stuff and uh, yeah you should check it out thanks for watching please subscribe and come on back this is MTR Fab and I am out